Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're here for the final nine of the 2023 Huck Central benefiting the Mary Sunshine House. It's the locomotive layout over at the Grand Central Station. Terry Miller, the disc golf guy, joined alongside the one and only Joey Buckets. <laughs> here excited to be back we got three players who've kind of separated themselves out in the lead all within two strokes of each other yeah making any chance at a a chase card winner or chaser uh that much more difficult when these guys are playing really good golf and they're already out in front to start the day uh i i know you're charging though what, what did you do uh you four or five under on the front nine as well four down on the front nine for me all right we're gonna head over to hole number 10 and it's kind of this blind tunnel shot that then has a bend. And then as you go all the way down to the basket, there's a really steep drop off directly behind it as well. So a little bit of work to do. So. Yeah, yeah so. really yeah. tough no, hole here. No, Alan wasn't sure if they were for sh uh, clear or not. So he stopped MJ just for a second. But then MJ said, yeah, we're all good to go. At least down there somewhere. Fairway so crucial here because out of position is going to guarantee some kind of awkward second shot. Yeah, you really have to keep this backhand turning the whole way down the hill. Oh, crap. Well, he says, oh, crap, but I kind of like that. Yeah, I, I think he should. <laughs> that is a good drive. Low screamer. Wow. Man, that's so crazy how similar those two shots were. And actually, Allen's was a little bit lower. It seemed like just maybe a little bit less turned. And this is a great shot from Matt. Just pinning it. Yeah, I heard those claps from the chase card walking up hole 11. Yeah, and the craziest part about that is when you're on the tee... The competitors, all four of those guys who just drove, have no idea just how close. It's just 100% blind. Obviously, they can hear the applause, but uh, you just have no idea. And we just saw, ultimately, you know, I'll say three and a half pretty good shots, all with varying results. Yeah, Allen's shot was just a foot high, and you see what he has. He's going to a forehand, it looks like here. He's at least 50 deep of the pin. Maybe, maybe 40, 45 or 50, but it's just going to be a pitch up with not much to look at. And this is kind of in that range where you really have to give it a bid. We saw Aiden maybe 15 feet farther back during round two, and he didn't even think about it. He just pitched it up right next to the basket. So that's a pretty solid birdie. Yeah, super scary green. Seems like if you're in circle two, laying up isn't the worst decision, especially if it's for parks. Such a such just like a tough hole. Wow, just seven birdies during this round out of 93 competitors, and you just watched two of them. Yeah, great shots there. Hole 11, you kind of go back up the hill. You just threw down a. Decently tight gap, 260, probably plays 320 or 310. And just keep it straight and give yourself a circle one putt. Obviously the tunnel, and it's really all about just, I feel like missing that one specific tree that if you beat that, the tree on the right there, the closer one. And that's going to be a good looking shot for Aiden. It's actually going to be just deep, probably 25 or 30. <laughs> so a couple of nice corrections. We saw Matt struggle with a few of the tee shots. Now back-to-back -back shots on both 9 and 10, or excuse me, 8 or 10 and 11. Yeah, Lee Carr kind of showing us why they're here, just <laughs> hitting the gap. <laughs> Oh, 
That was just a little high and just kind of catches the little branch, but he still has a long putt. Draws metal, but definitely in threat now of being down three to Aiden, who's still going to have a birdie luck. As I mentioned, Allen had the hot round of all competitors out here during round number two. So he's certainly capable of shredding this course. And Aiden's not going to be happy with that one. The wind kind of picking up too there's like a little left to right wind you can see him waving his hand there and yeah i was just thinking you think that's a record that was a triple leg slap i don't know if i've seen three <laughs> usually it's like a firm one maybe two yeah maybe two most of the time it's just one hard yeah slap. that was a triple leg slap yeah. though i don't know that should be a hashtag folks triple le triple <laughs> leg slap uh easy tap in and things got just that much tighter because now MJ is still within one, and they're both uh, out in front of Allen. Moving on to hole 12, 450 feet to par four. You want to get your drive up near this road, if not past it. And then you throw down kind of to the left. There's some OB on the left, but the hillside kind of keeps you away from it. the hillside you speak of. OB is actually on that far left side. Shouldn't really come into play. And MJ a little bit left. He was trying to go with a deep hyzer flip there. Catches a tree, but he still kind of has a chance. And honestly, even Aiden, depending on how far left that kicks, there's kind of gaps over there. You don't have to have the perfect tee shot to guarantee the birdie. You can you can be short of the road and still get the birdie. A great shot there by Allen. As he's gonna set himself up with one of the easier looks to the pin. And you called it. I, I was shocked as we walked over here to get into position. I was like, oh, this is gonna be a world of trouble. And then he actually has a pretty open lane to the pin here. Uh, of course, a little bit of this ceiling, but for the most part, he's got a good look. Just does he have the correct power, and it looks like he came up short on it. Kind of underestimated the distance. Yeah, not going OB, though. He He's probably within, like, 15 feet of the OB up there on the left, but I don't think he is OB, and that's a great shot from MJ with his banger GT. Yeah, I'll, I'll clarify. He's actually within about four or five feet of the OB on that high left side Okay, uh, is where Aiden is because I know he was ultimately had to step it off to make sure. So it can come into play as it runs the entire left side of this fairway. And just a prime drive here. Looking to take advantage. That's going to be a drop in birdie. I believe this was eagled today. At least that's what the Instagrams told me. Oh, and the jumper by Matt. Good left side chain, but not enough. That was a really good bit there from Aiden. I think just a little long. And he has a little bit of work left to do. Probably 20 feet or so. And he makes the comebacker. Ezra Goodwin was the uh, superstar out here today. 
doing work with the Eagles, so congrats to him. And it, he made his putt from about the same distance that Aiden had made his putt from for birdie, so. Yeah, we saw round one, two drives get so far up there, probably within 150 feet, so it's doable. Hole 13, this one is a tough hole to birdie, but not a tough hole to par. It's 440, it goes up to the right. If you have a big forehand, that plays well into the hillside. If not, backhand turnover also works. There's some OB long, probably only 20 feet deep of the pin. And that's what you see a lot, like you just throw a good shot and then you're 70 feet and you kind of give it a bid and most of the time you're walking away with a three. Yeah, this might be the most parred hole on the course actually, yeah, two, seeing it's playing as the fifth most difficult at 3.2, but very few birdies, but very few bogeys as you were just calling it. And that's on that right side, but it does fight through. So at least he's gonna be in the open. He won't have any obstruction for his approach. Aiden was one of the few birdies here yesterday. Aiden going with a lower line there. And it does safe. check up, yeah. It looks like he hits kind of that backside like we saw yesterday by uh, Christian. Yeah, you can see the stakes right there on the wood line. So an effective forehand approach there by Matt. And you'd love to, you know, maybe give that a little bit of a bid or, or put it up there, but you know if you hit the cage, there's a really good chance for it to actually roll back at you. So I can understand people being not too aggressive from distance on this one as well. And this isn't far from where Aiden converted yesterday. Maybe just a few feet deeper. Yeah, maybe a little bit more obstructed, though. He can pick up a stroke on everyone else. Oh, it kind of catches a little leafage there. And, yeah, this is what happens on the hole. You, you throw a pretty solid shot and you end up 70 feet or more and you just kind of have a bunch of tap-ins like we're seeing here. Clash would probably argue that uh, you need to throw one of their discs. Let's see what they're doing. Check out the whole lineup at ClashDisc.com. Just saw Heyday Line doing some work at the Copenhagen Open, which was also just completing a few hours before you guys were out here playing this round. So great to see the Clash representative. As we're looking at 14, the downhill, just 315 feet. I feel like once you hit the gap, you have a really good chance to get close enough for the birdie, is assuming you're coming in clean on the gap. Let's we'll see if MJ can do that. A little tight on that short left side, so he gets hung up yep. and we'll have a long look at best. Yeah, I feel like this hole plays a little bit less than 315. Maybe more like 280 or 290. And that's thrown to perfection there. Yeah, is this just a mid-range for, for most competitors? Maybe a putter, or is this more of a mid-range? I would say mid-range for most, because you want it to go left at the end. Aiden was saying this disc was just handed to him, I believe, back in Jonesboro. 
uh, during maybe a practice round and instantly went into his bag. He said he's been throwing it a ton. And now he's going to have a look for birdie. Super competitive battle here among the top three. 25, 26, and 26. Ooh. Trying to pull a Dylan from yesterday from way downtown. Yeah, that one was from further, I would say. That was close <laughs> to 100 feet almost. So it looks like a par is in store there for MJ. Aiden has a chance now to separate himself at least one more from MJ. He's not picking up anything on Allen here. Yeah, that's a really solid putt. This is kind of around the time during the final round of kind of a, a pretty big tournament where the 20-footers start to feel a little bit tougher, especially when you're in the lead, on lead card. Every putt is hard. Well, maybe not that one. <laughs> maybe not that one from MJ. The, the, those are, uh, in Alan's case, there. those are the, the ones where, you know, just stress-free feels that much better. We're going to head back up the hill to 15. Yeah, hole 15, one of the signature holes here. The drone flying underneath the power pole there, um, sometimes they like to do a triple mando underneath that, but no triple mando today. Most players going backhand hyzer. There's OB on the left side. If you kind of sky or hyzer it too much and it can skip OB. And then forehand plays well into the green on the hillside. So we've got Allen and MJ both at 26 under Aiden. A one-stroke advantage at 27. Yeah, really tight race here. And anywhere near that, like, tall grass in the middle is a pretty solid shot, like, right there from Aiden. Well, for something. I like to call that the Mohawk. Okay, I like it. <laughs> yeah. Gonna leak down into the left, but in still prime position. And four pretty routine shots. I don't want to call them basic, but all four of them doing pretty much what you need to do off the tee. It's just a matter of now who can actually attack the pin. And that just has a little too much height to it, so it's gonna leak down into the left side. OB way off on the left. Yeah, the OB more so comes into play on the first shot. And that's going to leak to the left side, probably 45, maybe 50 feet still to the pin, almost pin high. And there was a little debate as MJ is going to hang it w much wider. And I feel like he maybe even saw what the first two guys did and how much it was dragging down to the left. And said, hey, I'm going to make a correction and hang it out wider. 361. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's 22 years, and then you can guess those probably. <laughs> they were having a, uh, a guessing contest because Alan had just marked himself. I think he said he was 381, and then he borrowed the rangefinder. Oh, no. And you just can't make that mistake here. I mean, this is a, a relatively routine shot, you know, for his approach, and he hangs it out way too wide to the right and gets hung up. Yeah, the hillside really, you get a big skip with the backhand hyzer coming into this hillside, so I think he was just trying to play it wide and not skip way down the hill, and whoa, that jump putt just kind of low or gets a wind drop, or I'm not sure what that was. Yeah, and if you're noticing, look at the flag. There's There's essentially no wind, and I thought that was just a crazy release that came out of his hand. I'm not sure if something maybe stuck on his finger or if he just. Yeah, maybe something funky going on with the step putt timing. <laughs> and not the kind of metal you want. 
No, that's going to leave him with a weird kind of 25, 30 footer. Allen's uphill, probably 45, maybe 50. That's a really, really good putt coming down the stretch. Yeah, and more importantly, he's seeing that Aiden's struggling. He's, you know, now to 27 under. Aiden at best is walking away with a par. MJ still has a birdie look as well. So we could have three 27s here in a moment. Oh, he <laughs> oh. watched it. Yeah, yeah. You, you you know that he's not as confident, right? If he's got to watch it yeah. to see if it's going to go in, because normally he's a pretty good judge and knows exactly what he needs to do. Aiden now to save par. Wow, just pulls it right. Yeah, I think back to what was that hole thirteen or so or twelve? We saw kind of a similar where he just completely airballed it. This one was even closer though. That's solid a, comeback. Yeah, very solid, but what a turn of events. That's going to be a two-stroke swing from him to both Michael and Allen. Yeah, Allen and MJ were both one back, and now they're both one up on Aiden. But Aiden's still in it. I'm sure he's a little razzled and frustrated, but he's only one back with three to play. 20% off if you use the code DISCGOLFGUY over there at the Distinguished Doodle. The link is in the description. Now we have three holes left to play. This 500-footer downhill, you'd estimate maybe 450 at most is probably the, the effective power required? Yeah, 450 at most, maybe even like 430. And there's that creek that's short that shouldn't really come into play, but if there's some wind, it can. And I'm sure all players are going to be going over the creek, off the tee. Yeah, I needed more turn on that to possibly keep bending toward the pin, but he's safe and he'll still have a long look for birdie. Yeah, nothing really wrong with that shot there. Jay's kind of looks similar, but held flat for a while. Yeah, it kind of looks similar there. He too might have a long look. Some of those trees can come into play mm -hmm. on that left side. And now Aiden may be seeing a moment here where he can put one close and put the pressure back on them. But he leaves it low and, and he finds the OB. I would have bet $100 to not see that happen. Uh, I, w I was just that shocked. And that's going to clear easily. Yeah, again, not much wind to speak of. So to see him just basically release it low, you don't know if that's possibly a little pressure that's, you know, in the back of his mind, knowing that he just gave up two strokes to the other two guys who are leading now. But I, I'm expecting him to, you know, put enough power on this for the ace run. And instead comes up short. Allen trying to, like, put it over those limbs there. MJ seems to have a semi-decent clear look at it. And he gave up on that one. He actually looked down, not in confidence. He looked down because he thought he missed it. Yeah, that's two holes in a row where it's low, <laughs> and he's watched it the whole way. That is crazy. What a turn here. Matt still has his look for birdie, and he's going to come up short after being closest. But just like that, MJ now has jumped out as your solo leader, and this could be another two-stroke swing between him and Aiden as Aiden's lining up a bogey. Yeah, that kind of almost feels like the end there for Aiden, in a way, being three back with two to play. Yeah, especially knowing that hole 17 is a pretty straightforward hole. If you had two holes like 18 to play, 
you're thinking, oh, anything can happen. There's some tight gaps. But, yeah, the fact that hole 17 is as straightforward as it is. And, and Allen, I think, feeling a little frustrated as well. I'm not sure if he's razzed by the fact that that one snuck in for MJ, but certainly not the way he was carrying himself like he was after hole number 15. And 17, as I said, pretty straightforward. 345, slightly uphill. And if you can just put this one on a nice, tight, frozen rope, you probably can come up short and then maybe even skip to the pin. And that's just parked. Well, okay, not quite parked, but that's that's going to leave him 20, 25 feet. you got to think that's uh, probably a pretty easy look compared to what he's had over the last couple of holes. Yeah, and that puts pressure straight back on Allen. And that was a little left, but looked like it got up there a little bit. Yeah, he's looking for something, calling for it to give him still a shot. Compared to MJ, who's in just about prime position. I like how Aiden, even after two bogeys, and he kind of feels like he's out of it, he's still taking his time and throwing the shot in front of him, and he throws it really well. Well, that's about as good as you can ask for, and uh, knowing that he's not going to be losing any strokes for sure here, but still a pretty tall task now with just one to go. <laughs> Matt kind of giving that a, a nice little run there. Allen really needing that one. Yeah, you can tell he wanted that one. He didn't want to leave it short. It's so maybe 2025 at most uphill here for MJ. And you just got to feel like, you know, <laughs> he was running around cutting everyone else's sails down or something or shooting holes into everyone else's sails with what he's done over the last three holes. Just momentum shift, and you see it in Allen thinking maybe what coulda, coulda, woulda, shoulda. So Aiden's going to tap in, but still quite a deficit as we're about to head into 18. My name is Garrett Gerthy, also known as Double G, and I'm the founder of Double G Craft Jerky. Double G Craft Jerky is an awesome snack when you have a hankering on the course. You need a little something to pick you up out there so you can really get after a drive or finish on a putt and capitalize. When you're playing the disc golf round and you're hungry and you don't have a snack on the course, you start to lose focus, you start thinking about what am I gonna eat for dinner. With Double G Craft Jerky, that's not a problem. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Also, leave a comment as to uh, maybe a little bit of this madness that you guys have seen here out at the Grand Central Station over these last two rounds. Tell us if uh, things have been shaking out the way you would have expected. We have such incredible young talent and also some of our veterans out here. Right now, MJ's trying to close it out, and he seems to be in the driver's seat, and I feel like that all but seals it, right? I mean, uh, yeah, I feel like that definitely seals it. I mean, the gap is really intimidating and tight. Even with a two-stroke lead, a two-stroke swing can happen on this hole, but not after you hit the gap. Yeah, I, it just you, – you're thinking, you know, you don't want to see your competitors mess up, of course, but to have any chance if you're Aiden or Allen, you need MJ to hit one of those first few trees and take a nasty kick, and when he peers the tee shot – there's just really, it feels like there's nothing you can do after that. Yeah, and then Allen hits the left side and kind of drops down, but being two back and being 200 feet behind MJ, it's definitely sealed. And certainly at a point, your Allen's got to be thinking about those, the remaining podium spot as, you know, we're seeing him along with Aiden. And uh, you're talking probably a few hundred, maybe even more uh, dollars on the line and a little bit of those bragging rights and such to try and close out strong. So, Yeah, and even maybe some sponsorship uh, 
bonuses. So Matt is going to be on this left side. And MJ with a near perfect tee shot. And that should seal the deal here for MJ. Not sure we can even go to the spoiler card when you talk about uh, throwing two perfect shots on the final hole. Yeah, Aiden not happy with that, but he's still in circle one with the birdie putt. Knowing that, Allen's thinking, hey, I need to get up and down and at least get the par here. And that should put him right next to the pin. So that should secure the par. And right now, he's trying to hold on to that one-stroke advantage over Aiden. Yeah, so Aiden can tie it here with a made putt. See a little bit of a light breeze. That's really confident there, right on the pole. Solid putt, and you you got to give it to him. You know, you called it the the bogey on 15 and 16, and then to answer with birdies on 17 and 18. Yeah, solid showing from Aiden, and there's your champion, MJ. They had asked him if uh, he wanted to putt out last, you know, as kind of the the uh, courtesy, and he said, no, that's all right. I'll just step up and close things out. So we're going to see that MJ uh, is your champion. Congratulations to him. Aiden and Allen are all knotted up in a tie for second. We got a trophies uh, award to be given away here. We're also going to have an interview with MJ, your champion. Joe, any final thoughts before I let you go? Thanks for having me on for the first time ever. And um, thanks for everyone for watching. And congrats to Michael Johansson. And yeah, thank you. Uh, it was a real pleasure. Thank you so much for joining. Uh, like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. Let's hear from our champion, MJ, Michael Johansson, one last time. We'll see you guys at the next one. I'm the Disc Golf Guy, and that was my video blog. Joined by our champion, Michael Johansson. MJ, you were handed the trophy, but you don't even know how many times you've won this? Is it no, that often? No. Well, it's the two. I think it's at least three, but it kind of, they kind of blur together after a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and speaking of which, you're playing with some of the, the, the young guns that are out here when we see someone like our up-and-coming superstars like an Aiden, who really, I feel like things came all the way down to the last three or oh, four holes. Couple. Yeah, so talk a little bit about not only the young talent, but then also uh, trying to put this away in the last few holes. Well, it was... You could tell it was going to be a battle the way it was going. No one really started having wobbly rounds or anything. Everyone kept going, so which was fun to have a nice battle. And, and getting to the end, it was really just a couple of random putts here fall. <laughs> Aiden made a random mistake, but he's young, so it takes a while to learn. Sometimes they just work. Other times, you, know, you got to learn from mistakes. And it's fun to play with Wags. See Wags playing better again. That's nice to. It was a good day because you know two Masters guys battling out at the top of the field is always fun. <laughs> Well, and that's what I was just going to say. You guys proving that clearly, uh, not only just being veterans, but knowing the game, knowing how to battle all the way till the end. Uh, what what else is in store for you in the next uh, couple of weeks or couple of months in terms of competition? Uh, the next little bit, it's more local. I'm going to have a little more fun, and then I'll go up. Uh, my next big event is probably really Birdie Open, the replacement for Iron Hill National Tour. Yeah. And then we'll get back a little bit of the Pro Tour later in the year. All right, go ahead and uh, provide any shout outs or sponsors or thanks or anyone you need to talk to. Oh, I got to thank my sponsor, Discraft. Everyone knows them, but they make great stuff, so I love them for my comments. And also, Ledgestone, they really support me and help me stay out on the road. All right, everyone, that is your champion, MJ, getting it done out here, really charging in the last two rounds to make it happen out here. Thank you to everyone that's uh, joined us here throughout the weekend. And also, like, share, subscribe. We'll see you guys at the next one.